Uh, what is Kettering University? Kettering University is a small university in Michigan. It was founded in uh, 1918 by General Motors. It continued to be General Motors Institute for many years. Somewhere in 1960, General Motors decided that they cannot keep university by themselves. So after that, uh, Kettering became uh, private university, but there is no honor. So there is board of trustees for people finishing catering. And usually they give a million like donation. This is the way to be member of board of trustees. What is famous catering, it continue to be number one in the world if you want to be automotor engineer, automotor manager, and our student, uh, we teach our student in entrepreneurship. There is special courses how to make project, how to make company, how to make, uh, uh, how to handle things on the market and so on. Uh, so I spent there six months a year and the other six months I'm department chair in the, uh, for software engineering and computer science department, uh, Institute of Mathematics and Informatics, Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. I have 39 people working for me and in the field of software uh, systems. Okay, we're speaking about multimedia. Where are the multimedia nowadays? Everywhere, in the web, everywhere around the multimedia. What is this? This is the place where in the, in the past all the information was kept. Alexandria Library. Now, Instead of this, everything is distributed all over the world. And now we are coming in Marrakesh. I put here nice video, nice, but the internet is not so strong. What is this multimedia? I was happy. I was a person who was involved in the first project where the word multimedia was introduced. It was introduced by Tsikhridis uh, maybe 35, 40 years ago with the meaning that we're using this word nowadays. And I was a person who works in the group with images during this period of time. And uh, during this period of time, I produced the first image semantic paper in the world. I was young. Now, something else. Here, what is it here? This is more easy question. These are different paintings of Monet. There is a bridge. You see here the bridge, here the bridge, here the bridge. Okay, we continue the bridge. This is the bridge where Manet was alive on the bridge. Here is the bridge that I took a picture of this bridge by myself. And now I'm thinking if the most important thing, if you have information, is to retrieve information. Otherwise, why you keep if you don't uh, have tools to retrieve? So, if I have one of these, can I find which is the real bridge or no? I will try. So during my presentation, I will try to present different methods which help of this. So the, another question is about uh, 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 part of the, these flowers. These flowers is nowadays, and these flowers are on the pictures. So. Let's go in the Mona Lisa. Here uh, on the painting, you see this bridge. This is the bridge nowadays. So if there are possibility, if I found one image to f this and I said similar, nowadays everybody speak about similarity to find how it works. I'll try to present some methods, maybe it's it cannot solve all these problems, but give some ideas. Uh, nowadays, even if you search by name, let's say sunset, you c what is sunset? Is sunflower or some oxygen mask or some submarine? Even the word is uh, not always images you can describe with words. In image, you have more content than uh, that you can describe with uh, some words. Or 
you receive something like this. So, is it helpful? Maybe, yeah. Maybe, no. What I'm trying to do today, I will start with some image search engine, semantic multimedia retrieval, and I will describe different multimedia descriptors in MPEG-7, local features, Gabor filter, Fisher vector, Vlad, backup words, uh, what to do with music, and uh, I'll go and spend uh, some time about what I'm doing with art images. Uh, I will not go on now because the internet is not strong. Here are several uh, image search engines. You can put image and you can receive something similar. What they are doing, similarity usually is based on some descriptors. Let's say you have MPEG-7 descriptors about color and you see some similar colors. Or you have something which describes the shape and you see similar by shape. Is this really what you want? Is this really... Mo you, you usually need something similar, but it's not similar color. It can be completely di this, but your human perception to be the same. Always I said, in very near future, even nowadays, you have so-called TV with 5,000, 10,000 station. You like something. And then said, I want similar. What is similar? This is what I will try to give some idea, which not cover everything, of course, but some idea how you can do this. Here uh, is a list of uh, some data sets. So, the idea is more or less about semantic multimedia retrieval. Uh, we have feature design component which extract the visual and uh, the visual information, indexing how this can be done in the way that the retrieval engine can do this in a very short period of time. MPEG-7 was very nice uh, attempt. It continued to be used for many people. Uh, nowadays, more or less, people are going in different direction. But uh, uh, if you think about color, uh, descriptors sometimes uh, give better um, view than other uh, descriptors. Here I put how it looks for dominant color descriptors, which this is description of quanti quantized hue, saturation, illumination. This is exactly about this strange image. Everybody asks me why it's so pure image, but if it's pure, maybe I expect more data. So this is uh, how it looks in MPEG-7. Another is color color description, which is color histogram in HSV space, and you have some vector of numbers. Uh, or color layout descriptor, which is special color description using another space, and you see how small amount of numbers describe this image. Describe something about the color, about the color, not about the composition and other things in the image. Uh, moving from MPEG-7, uh, the next step people are using nowadays very often, and I heard two, three very nice presentations this morning about local feature, which are based on scale uh, space extima detection, key point localization, orientation as, uh, assignments, and key point descriptors. What is uh, not so good, you have many, something thousand of numbers. And here is an example. What you have the description about, what is here? This is piece, the cathedral the near to the Leaning Tower. And these are two, uh, two um, images and this is how uh, how near the sieve description look likes. Uh, the 
the sieve is great, but it works when you have, let's say, uh, like uh, pizza or something cold, you have a lot of corners. If you have a lot of corners, it's fantastic, good to describe the object. If it's more simple, let's say if you have only rectangles, squares, uh, the result is not so good. Gabor filter is a very useful linear filter for edge detection. Uh, uh, here I give some example about different degrees, uh, orientation at 30 degrees with the X axis and the kernel and the corresponding Gabor filter. Uh, next step, which is nowadays very often used, is Fisher vector. Something somebody said is nice because uh, 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 describe an average distribution modeled by parametric genera generative model. So here I gave the step for path detection, feature extraction, visual di uh, dictionary, and so on, until some classifier. What, when what was introduced, people said, this is the end. This, everything will go there. The nicest thing is, uh, this is something, it's a very long vector, but you know exactly on which place what you have. And in this case, you can use L2 distance to compare because in MPEG-7 descriptors, you need a very special function for similarity search. Uh, here I gave several images and the corresponding what descriptors. Back of words, it's a great idea. It's techniques which substitute each description of the region around an, some interesting point of image with visual words. So here I give some example about airplanes, faces, people, bikes, and so on. After that, in my presentation, I show you some something that I have done on art images. Um, effectiveness, which is mean average precision, and uh, um, efficiency, which is milliseconds per query, obtained using what and uh, back of words for different settings is presented in this diagram. Okay. If I will speak about multimedia, I have to see uh, to say some words about also sound. For sound, this morning I heard three representations in uh, my session using male frequency how to do this. So I think the people here are very familiar, but let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll go by some example. This is the four seasons. Which season is this? Without the four seasons, which season? So what I have done, I tried a lot with not so big success, but uh, 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 if you have spring music to find another similar spring music, you know, there are so many um, software finding similar music, but similar by programming. Pro the program music was introduced by Bach for the first time. And I try uh, on um, music about uh, season, especially of spring, and something about war, which is uh, uh, more dramatic music. The results are 
not really publishable. But now, now in the next part of my presentation, I will speak about one system, which is art, painting, image, color, aesthetics, and semantic system. So the idea is that I present the images in three space. The image space, in image space are color, texture, uh, uh, semantic space is um, the meaning of the elements. Many people are trying for image to find there is horse or car, some meaning. And uh, uh, abstract space, uh, something which is more high level about the emotion, about uh, uh, the culture influence, something that really people are interested in similarity on more high level than on the very low level that you can find in the most of the search engines. Okay, now let's go in the art. Here we have Baroque. Uh, and this is high level concept. If you go and read what is Baroque, is period, 70th century, but there are words like drama, uh, tensions, emotions, and so. And I try set, can I find if I have something which describe Baroque, can I find another image that is from this period of time. So I succeed more than 80%, I'll show. Uh, another thing is cubism, which is no bound, no copying form, no texture, color. I give you about cubism, um, one example for the Detroit Art Museum, which is, there are two Picasso, paintings, one near to another. One is when he was married, and one was when he was divorced. Can you imagine what is, which was in Cubism when he was divorced? And when he was married was very nice realistic paintings. Uh, expressionism, um, which is primitivans, uh, uh, primitives, Fantasy. How I go here in this? I'll show. The color composition was very important to find. Or some symbolism. What these things symbolize? This is? Oh, this is day, night. Day and night. Morning. Middle of the day, the night. So where I, I start to think, so where I went, I, want, I went to study different kind of contrast. Uh, so here are um, examples of contrast of hue, which are yellow, red, blue, red, blue, green, yellow, green, violet, red, and so on. Another is complementary contrast. Two colors are called complementary if they're pigment mix together is in neutral gray. And another is saturation contrast. Saturation relates to the degree of purity of the color. So now I go into two different paintings. One is from Rembrandt, another is from Picasso. Completely different composition, Different colors, but they are have the same white dark contrast. Maybe if you like one, you will like the other one. There is something similarity, and the similarity is the white dark contrast. And the same example here is with two paintings: one from Renoir, another for Claude Monet, and these two they have the cold warm contrast, the same. Or uh, this is with the same uh, cold warm contrast, two uh, paintings from Manet and Brecoux. 
So, what I have done, I, uh, I develop one system which try to establish, uh, this is the screen for setting the parameters, and here you have the result, this is one painting for Bot Botticelli, and you, you find what is the dominant hue, the warm neutral, contrast, dominant saturation, clear dark, and so on. So, I try to extract from the images different kind of harmony, different kind of contrast, so I define, I will not go in mathematical definition of all this, and on the base of this to, to find similarity. Here is an example of retrieving dark white contrast, set white, and here are uh, the result. Uh, here we see the distribution of paintings grouped by movements based on cold, warm contrast. Uh, all this was done on about 600 uh, paintings from, uh, uh, from a lot, uh, about uh, 50 uh, artists and you can see that using t this distribution, I can find what is icon. So for icon, I found big present, uh, pr uh, pr uh, very dark, warm colors. You have gold and dark. Uh, for Baroque and Romanticism, I found that you have green and blue. From impressionism, which usually they study sunline uh, using local tones of uh, natural object and so on, I found whiteness in painting from different movements. So, what I have done, I have the definition several slides before. I would convert this definition for different mo uh, movement using s some contrast and harmony. And this is white in this distribution of paintings group by movement. So you can see that uh, big present of dark color and dark white contrast is typical for bar uh, Baroque. Even when you go in uh, Amsterdam and see all these old paintings, you have the feeling that during this period of time, the black color was what the cheapest, so everything was black. But after that, looking more uh, precise, you see that the the black color present also the white. You can always see, see the white uh, the, where from where the white is coming. So the source of white, even if it's not presented. So you 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 use for different styles, different techniques. Distribution of paint is grouped by movements based on first dominant hue. And, and you see the color around orange are frequently dominant color in the paintings in classic art. Uh, another graph here are different artists. So you can see that partial Triads are used in a lot of cases of natural paintings for instance Picasso. Uh, hue contrast, you can see more in Botticelli. Uh, white dark contrast in Baroque artists. Uh, you can see also uh, white dark contrast in Miro abstract painting. Uh, so, the first step was uh, I developed this kind of system, so they give uh, this system, classify, give some ideas about uh, uh, the contrast, the harmony. So, the next step was uh, based on this, I developed some um, uh, data mining system, more or less. So, uh, the image I div divide in small part Usually nowadays they said back and forth, so this part I put uh, classified in, uh, in like words. So I, in this case I receive a back and forth on this. On the base of the back of words, 
and back and analysis of every word using the harmony and contrast, I, I was able to predict different things. So this, for instance, this is a uh, screenshot, five by five titles belonging to cluster, which is color structure. So in, this means these are the different paths which belongs to one word. Then I use this in the techniques back of words. Uh, this is visual lexicon. The titles cause to centroid of core structure descriptors. And here is an example. So I have, as I mentioned, uh, about 600 uh, paintings. And I put the classifier and you see the result. So in this way, using the classifier, I found what is uh, for every um, artist, you see how, the, how he came in different art style. Uh, here you see F measure for what I have done I show before. Uh, usually, uh, Raphael, there is a, a little bit problem which is misplaced be, uh, with Michelangelo. Most of Rembrandt, Turner, Mucha, it's Caravaggio are very well defined. So in this case, I was able using this uh, back efforts that I show, small um, paths, I was able to define rules. So, uh, define some rules, what is Baroque, what is uh, Goya, what is Rembrandt. Here is example of this rules. So, uh, uh, let's say Renaissance means A64. So this word has to be bigger than 9.5 and so on. So now, now I have also rules. And now the retrieval is very easy. If somebody wants to set I want Renaissance and I want Michelangelo, whatever, I have the rules. I, I do not need to go in the paintings to search, I can use, reuse the, use, uh, the rules that were obtained and to, uh, and to give very quick answer. Uh, and here, to, to prove all this, I have done this on these six uh, artists. These are very modern Israel artists from Israel. Uh, if you look on the paintings, there are only colors with your eyes, you are very uh, difficult to recognize, but it seems that they put colors, different colors, one after another in very consistent way. So another thing that I have done is about video. So multimedia is not only images, is video. Uh, this is one work done together with people in Pisa, Italy. The idea is, here is the station. The station sent video, uh, different video, but uh, which are different programs, TV programs, but they also send the description. Because on the station you have a lot computer power, you can make also description of the frames. So here is uh, um, your TV. Your TV has enough power nowadays to make different filters. So in this case, if you like one movie, I can set I like similar. If you like sport, I can put uh, filter for sport, for, uh, for something else. Even something nice in this work, uh, we define pilot frame, which 
give us the possibility not only to jump S frame, but jump further. If some of distances that we calculate are less than something, we can jump further without to do all the calculation on the receiving stations, which is fully mathematical stuff. So here is how the user will choose what he wants. Uh, for conclusion, uh, this is one work made by Smelder from Holland. He's, he makes even more high level that I try. He said, if you have s some images, what's going in your brain? So here are MRI, functional MRI um, uh, scans giving some images how different part of your scan will be connected. Uh, something uh, to conclude, I want to tell two things. First, uh, I'm um, editor of chief of uh, Journal of Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, which the name is Serdica computing map. This is the, uh, the email address. So I saw so nice pe uh, presentation this morning. So I really encourage the young people, if they send to this address something, I, I almost promise that I will print it. And second thing uh, that uh, I think uh, I can be of help of so many nice young people coming here presenting some ideas in different fields. I'm very old, so I, I know in different fields. So I really uh, be happy to help in any way. So thanks.